All right, thank you guys all for joining us. We have a very, very special guest tonight, Hans Finzel, Dr. Hans Finzel. And, you know, I, <laughs> I, I'm actually going to read a little bit about Hans because he's got so many great credentials, but then I'm going to really introduce him because he's a good friend and mentor to me. But you guys should know that this is his 10th book. He's going to talk some about this tonight, his 10th book that he's written. And I think, is it 10th or 11th, Hans? 10th. 10th. And I think I've read almost all of your books, and they are all absolutely fantastic. I think they're all on my bookshelf. And they all are dog-eared and page-flipped and highlighted and all of that. So uh, you guys are in for a treat. And Hans just finished um, leading uh, World Venture, which is one of the largest missionary organizations in the world. He was the CEO, uh, CEO for 20 years there, and now he's started a nonprofit called HD Leaders, and he does podcasting besides author. He does speaking events. So it's just a real treat for us to get to um, hear Hans. And then because I'm not really going to read all that, Hans, I've known Hans since the day I started with Juice Plus, and um, he's, he and Donna, our national marketing director, sideline buddies, we're all on the same peak team. And he's the father, they're the parents of four beautiful children. And Hans travels all around the world doing some amazing things for other cultures and people. And he is just a true leader and the perfect person to talk to us tonight about leadership. So, um, and besides that, Hans, you're just a dear friend and somebody I so respect and I just absolutely love you. So thank you so much for being willing to come and speak into the hearts of our team tonight. You're so welcome. Thank you, Reagan. Uh, Rich, Reagan and Richard have been great, great friends of Donna and mine since we met through the Juice Plus business. And we are a kind of a mutual admiration society. So <laughs> I was thrilled to do this call tonight. In case we've never met, uh, I've, uh, like she said, I, I've always been interested in leadership. I do have my doctorate in the field and uh, I, I, I'm fascinated by leadership because leaders make things happen. And a lot of people have worked for terrible leaders and bad bosses. And, and so my hope for you is you grow your team. You will be a leader, whether you like it or not, that you'd be the kind of leader that people would love to follow. And you wouldn't be one of those micromanaging bosses that make life miserable. Now we don't use the word boss in the juice plus world, but you are a leader. And I, I find a lot of people in the juice plus world, especially a lot of moms, uh, by the way, Donna sends her greetings, and uh, we were in Phoenix, Arizona this week. We just buried her dad on Saturday, but he lived a wonderful long life, so a little bit of sadness, but she sends her greetings, and uh, we, we've learned through the years, so we made the commitment when we started having these kids, we had four children, that she would stay home and raise the kids, and uh, I, one of the things, we, we've been in Juice Plus for 17 years, one of the things I love about the Juice Plus mission, uh, the Juice Plus company, is all the moms on a mission. You know, we have an army of moms on a mission, and I just think that's like the sweet spot for our company right now. And uh, so that was Donna. For, for all the years the kids were growing up, she stayed home. And then when our first son had to go to college, she realized she needed to start making some income. And that's when she found Juice Plus providentially at the perfect moment. And so not only did, did we become raving fans of the product, uh, she said, I'm going to do this as a business. And she quickly became a national marketing director. And it's just been a wonderful income for her. The point here is she became a leader. Because when you're a national marketing director, you've got to be a great leader. You've got to learn leadership skills. And for all those years, she was mostly just leading our four children. And can I just say, our kids turned out awesome. <laughs> she okay. did a bang up job because they are uh, three of the four are married. They were all just here for the funeral. We, we don't get together much because they all live in different states. One of them lives in South Africa, but it was a thrill uh, for us all to be together. They've got, they've given us nine grandkids. And I just look at those kids and I say that's Donna's leadership because I traveled a lot during the child re rearing years. So let's talk about leadership in the book. Uh, and, and so I, I love leadership because if, if, le if I can help a good leader be a great leader, then I feel really satisfied. And so for all of you who want to build your Juice Plus business, you've got to learn more about 
being a great leader. And leadership is one word. I define leadership with one word, the word influence, okay? Anytime you influence anybody else, you're leading them, whether you like it or not. So this is my 10th book, Top 10 Ways to Be a Great Leader. And uh, I wrote this after 30 years of leadership experience. So you know there's a lot of leadership books out there, right? And some people might say, what, another book on leadership? Do we really need another book on leadership? I would say, you need this book because it's chock full of wisdom. I think if there's one thing I have after 30 years of studying leadership, getting my doctorate in it, being a CEO, is I've learned the important things. And, and I like to say this covers the 10 essential skills every leader needs to master. And so I love top 10 lists. And I realize the word leadership has 10 letters in it. And so the contents of the book are use the acrostic of the word leadership. Now, we don't have time tonight to go through the whole book. What I'm going to do is whet your appetite. I'm going to highlight a couple of the chapters that are my favorites. I mean, come on, they're all my children. How can I have favorites? <laughs> but I'm going to highlight some of the ones I want to draw your attention to to whet your appetite. And I, and I hope it'll motivate you to read the book. And I've designed the book with study questions at the end of every chapter for questions for group study. It's perfect for teams to study together. So I took the word leadership. For every letter in the word leadership, I have a principle, okay? So let's dive right in. But I wanna begin by showing you a slide. I'm gonna go back and forth here with a few slides here. And the first one is this one right here. Great leaders don't set out to be a leader. They set out to make a difference. It's never about the role. It's always about the goal. You know, I don't really particularly like people who say, oh, I want to be a leader so people will look to me and I'll have power. I find the best leaders are actually reluctant leaders. And when I see this quote, I think about our Juice Plus business. So we're not really setting out to be a leader. We're setting out to make a difference. And we're, we're you know, we're moms on a mission. We're people on a mission. We're in part of a healthy living revolution. It's never about the role. It's always about the goal. And so to achieve that goal, we have to get into leadership. So the first uh, chapter is the L in leadership. If you were to ask me, uh, some, I was on a radio interview two days ago, say, what parting words of wisdom can you give no, actually, I'm sorry. I was on a Lyft ride today, you know, an Uber ride. And the guy, uh, he, he said, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm an author. And, and I said, yeah. I said, yeah, I've written 10 books. It's like he stopped the car and looked at me and said, what? <laughs> <laughs> he was pretty excited. But then I told him I write about leadership. And he said, well, what? At the end of the ride, he said, what parting words can you share? And I said, well, the L in leadership. If you guys do that with your hand, remember this, the L in leadership represents the two most important words in a leader's vocabulary, listen and learn. If you hear nothing else tonight, and I told this uh, Lyft driver, I said, if, if he, did, he hadn't even been to college, I said, you know, I don't know if college is worth it or not. You know, 15 years ago, I told my kids they should go to college and graduate, and three of them have. But nowadays in the new economy, I'm not even sure it's worth it. But I said, but if you can be a lifelong learner, that is critical to being a successful person. So listen and learn. That's the two most important words in the leader's vocabulary. And you know how they're interchangeable? I mean, they're so uh, joined at the hip. You know, nothing annoys people more than a leader or a boss that doesn't listen to them. You ever work for somebody that doesn't listen? It's so miserable. And when people don't listen, it's because they think they know it all. And they think, well, because I'm the leader, you just do what I say. And so if you don't listen, you can't learn. And, if you, can, if you, and you cannot learn without listening. And people know if you're a good listener. So I challenge you to work on your listening skills I wanna show you, let me see, oh, what happened? To, okay, I wanna show you another slide. Uh, where is it here? One of my favorite sayings by uh, Maya Angelou. I've learned that people will forget what you said 
People forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And the way you make fee people feel great is you listen to them. And so listening is such an important skill to learn as a leader. Don't be the kind of person that, uh, that is always waiting for the other person to stop talking so that you can talk. And we, we teach this in the Juice Plus business, don't we? Don't vomit all over people with all the great information you have. You know, the best way to convince people to take Juice Plus, honestly, is to ask leading questions and listen. And it's the same about leadership. So that's the L in leadership. Now, the E, I want to touch on the next letter in leadership. And that's the E. It stands for emotional intelligence, EQ. EQ is a hot topic right now. Have you guys heard about emotional intelligence? It's yeah. sort of floating around a lot. And I want to show you a picture of an of a iceberg. This is, to me, one of the best ways that I can uh, demonstrate uh, emotional intelligence. So see this iceberg right here? On the top of the iceberg above the waterline is your IQ. Below the waterline is your EQ. In an iceberg, you probably know what's below the waterline is bigger than what's above the waterline. If you're recruiting someone to join your team, what do you care more about, their IQ or their EQ? IQ is how smart you are, but EQ is how healthy you are as a person dealing with other people. And I've hired a lot of people in my career. I've fired a lot of people. And I hated firing people. And I, every person I ever fired, I fired them because of what was below the waterline. Not because they weren't smart and gifted and talented, but they had horrible people skills. And they were toxic relationally. That's emotional intelligence. Here, here's a definition of EQ. The capacity to be aware of, control, and express one's emotions and to handle interpersonal relationships judiciously and empathetically. The ability to know oneself as well as what others are perceiving about us. Do you have any blind spots? You know, blind spots are things everybody else knows about you, but you don't know about yourself. You can be 95% effective, but you could have an annoying habit that's a blind spot that reduces your effectiveness as a leader. And at the end of the second chapter, I have some really cool team exercises that, where you can carefully get vulnerable with each other and try to do a little research with your team about how you're coming across EQ. It's such an important topic. Uh, in my career, I always used to, I had a wonderful assistant, Joyce. She worked for me for 15 years. I never hired anybody without her as a woman evaluating a high level uh, potential per hire until I, she gave me her thumbs up. And we had a saying uh, about hiring people that I think works great for you to recruit for your Juice Plus team. Hire for attitude, train for skill. Hire for attitude, train for skill. I would rather take somebody that is uh, got a great attitude than somebody that is super skillful, but they're a know-it-all. And we've we've been in this business 17 years and we've had people come in that were know-it-alls, you know? And they said, well, I'm gonna do this my way. They, they wouldn't follow the tried and proven system and they failed and then they went away uh, because they weren't open, they weren't teachable. And so attitude is so important, That's emotional right. intelligence. The A in leadership stands for accessibility. And in that chapter, I also cover vulnerability. I've been a fan of Brene Brown uh, for long before our Juice Plus company embraced her, and I'm so glad that they have, because I really believe the whole her whole teaching on uh, brave, uh, courageous leadership is so important and being vulnerable. So the A is for accessibility, and this is a bit of a challenge, isn't it? Be accessible to your people, but still get your work done. Do you ever feel like you got too many people wanting too much from you? You ever struggle with that? 
with our smartphones, do you ever have people who are impatient with you because you didn't answer them quick enough? Mm. With and Voxers? Oh my gosh. The Voxer, the Voxer. <laughs> how, do we, how do we describe the curse of Voxer? <laughs> Poor Donna, you know, we've been on a funeral thing for a week, so she basically is offline, but she looked at her Voxer yesterday and she said, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> I, I think they're like little rabbits having little babies all the time. <laughs> and so how do you manage your time to get your work done, but also be accessible to your team? I think it's important that you are accessible. And so to me, the solution is to have some boundaries. And I would encourage you to have a schedule and to have times of the day when you're accessible to your team and times of the day when you're not, or maybe days of the week, you know, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm going to have my alone time Monday, you know, however you slice it and dice it, a schedule is so valuable. And if you have a schedule, let your team know. Because some people do get impatient when we don't answer them right away. So I think it's important for your team to know you know, on Tuesdays and Thursday morning, I'm going to go dark because that's when I need to do my thinking time, my alone time, my deep time. So a schedule really helps. Years ago, uh, leaders hid out in ivory towers or hid out in executive office floors and buildings, and they never saw the troops, the rank and file. I'm a huge fan of millennials. Some of you on this call I think maybe are millennials, I'm not sure, but uh, we love millennials in this business. And I've worked with a lot of millennials. And one thing I've learned about uh, millennials is they don't like top-down leaders. Uh, they want to work shoulder to shoulder with you and they want to be accessible to you. And so they don't want all these barriers between you and them. And they also appreciate vulnerability. Uh, I found with my team that I led for 20 years, you know, I made them call me Hans. My predecessor was Dr. Webster. When I became the president, they called me Dr. Finzel. I said, wait a minute, time out. Don't <laughs> call me Dr. Finzel, call me Hans. And it, it took them a while to get over the fear of, I mean, it, that was just like a power distance thing. But I, I taught them that I want to work with you shoulder to shoulder, side by side. That's accessibility. The D in leadership stands for determination. The E in leadership stands for effective communication. The R stands for resilience. And I want to show you a little uh, picture. How resilient are you? We've had some people on our team that we've led that were very rigid. And, and what happens with rigid people? Well, they don't learn well. And when things go bad, they quit or they break. We had this beautiful cherry tree in our front yard. We live in Colorado near where Reagan and Richard live and, and Ellen. And we were, uh, we were, uh, we had this beautiful cherry tree that died two years ago after I love that tree. And when we cut it down, we found out the reason it all the limbs broke off is it was dry inside. And if it's, if you're dry inside and you're rigid, you break. But a living tree, so by the way, we replaced it with a beautiful young crabapple tree that my grandkids helped us pick out. And that little young tree is so strong, but you know, it's full of life and it's flexible. And that's one of the keys of great leadership. You've got to be flexible. And that's what resilience is. So let me show you just a couple of slides about resilience. You ever seen that before? A slinky. I love slinkies and uh, everybody knows what a slinky is. I think by the way, the best toys in the world for kids don't have batteries. And this is one of the great toys. And I like to say we should be like a slinky, flexible and pliable and, and easy to be shaped into other shapes. So. I don't know how many of y'all have ever heard of David Beavers, but David Beavers is a 100 Club National Marketing Director in our Juice Plus company. He and I actually went to graduate school years ago. And I want to read you this quote from David Beavers about the difference between 
um, being um, persistent versus being resilient. This is so important. Resilience is about our capacity to bounce back from difficulties, disappointments, heartbreak, and hard times. It's about the ability, it's the ability to recover. In this Juice Plus business, you do have disappointments. You do have difficulties, heartbreaks, team conflict, people you've loved and poured yourself into that all of a sudden they've just gone away. You know, the birds got them and they're gone. And so resilience is the, you have to have it as a leader. You can't let these hard times and disappointments take you out. Sometimes we have persistence, but we lack resilience. And we really need to have both. It's like two sides of a coin. Resilience is absolutely critical in most endeavors, in leadership, in our lives. Persistence keeps us in the race, but resilience returns us to the right path when we get knocked off course, even when we get knocked to the ground. Don't you love that? All these quotes, by the way, are, are in the book, but I love David Beavers and, and his, um, you know, he says that the Juice Plus business is a self-improvement program cleverly disguised as a business. Well, let me hit one more and then we're done at 730, right, Reagan? Yep. So I want to uh, leave a couple of minutes for questions. Uh, let me do one more. The S in leadership stands for servant attitude. Servant attitude. It's not about me. It's about we. And if I help people get what they want, I will get what I want. No one likes to follow leaders that are self-serving, that are in it for themselves. And I've seen that in the Juice Plus world, we have some great leaders in our company, and I don't even start mentioning them all, but I, I find the people that have had the greatest success in the Juice Plus company, well, let me just mention one, Jeff Roberti, because he's the top. I am amazed at how he serves people to help them grow in this business. It's just amazing. So let me leave you with this. Um, oops, I hit leave meeting instead of share screen. Don't do that. <laughs> no, that wouldn't be too good. Let me leave you with uh, what Nelson Mandela said about servant leadership. Uh, the two words under his picture, 27 and 72, he, he was in prison in South Africa for 27 years. And he got out when he was 72. And he changed, he saved that country. My daughter and her husband and uh, their little child live in South Africa. So the place is very dear to me. Here's what he said about us uh, being a servant. Oops. He said, a leader is like a shepherd. He or she stays behind the flock, letting the most nimble go ahead, whereupon the others follow, not realizing that all along they were being directed from behind. That's servant leadership. Isn't that amazing? So that's, that's a quick uh, summary of some of the chapters. My website is hanspinzel.com and the book is available. I just want to let you know in print and Reagan's going to give away four or five of these. It's also available at audible.com as an audio book that I've read and it's also in Kindle. All right. Wow. That's Hope great. Enjoyed that. Reagan, take it away. That was fast. <laughs> I was really good. I know. And I love that we have still have H I P to go. That yeah. means you should read the book. And I, I do have to say, you guys, it was so good. And there's so many great ideas in here. There's a couple in here on communication, on just some fun ideas on how to communicate with the team and just being overly communicative, which I think is super important. And um, Hans, you're amazing. Thank you so much. And I'm going to unmute everybody. And you guys, if you have any questions, you can ask Hans any questions that you'd like do you have any questions for Hans? Just thank Just you, thank Hans. You. You're welcome, Missy. Thank you very much. Reagan. Hans, you're awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, Bobby, good to see you. Thank you, Hans. Is that Patty back there in the background? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Patty. Hey, Bobby. Who's that person between you there? That, that's our son, Robbie. Hey, Robbie. How are you? Good. By the way,